Hello, welcome to the JV Show. This is Jorge. And this is Viv. And this week we got our star on the show. Hello. Awesome. Welcome back. Mm. Welcome back. It's been a while. When was the last time you were here? Actually, not too long ago, I feel like. Really? Yeah, within 10 podcasts. No way. No. No. Really? We do one every week. So were you here in the last two and a half months? Yeah, no. Yeah, I would say so. No way. When, when was the last time we talked about paranormal activity? I think I oh, feel it was like Halloween. Fuck, actually, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I feel like terrible. you were pre-Christmas. Yeah, is what yeah, I was yeah. thinking. Halloween. It was Halloween. Because I, I it's think it's been be- quite a while. Yeah, between Christmas and now, we've been busy, so we haven't had a lot of guests, anyways. So I was okay, like, I that's don't five know. months ago. Y- yeah, that's okay. quite a long that's time. A, that is quite a long time. Okay, that's quite a long time. I mean, we're pretty bad because we should be getting people on more often, but sometimes we're lazy and shit, or sometimes we can't organize in time. Oh my god, that one week I was like, oh, we have s- some solid guests we have two back-to-back guests but like they both canceled last minute yeah damn is what it is but we had a pretty fun conversation i forgot what that was that week but i think it was, it was a galley and tiff supposedly yeah but th- i think that week we talked about the scenario yeah, thing we had a we had a pretty funny one conversation mm. that was hilarious i i forgot exactly all the things that happened but some of the <laughs> scenarios i actually went, went around there. and asked a few people what they would do in those scenarios oh. and it's kind of funny because i tried asking carmen and the whole time she's like i don't fucking know okay stop asking me like, <laughs> why can't you entertain me <laughs> yeah pretty much we uh we went and went through like imaginary scenarios mm. uh can you think of any off the top of your head uh we should try to do a new scenario i mean eventually we will I'm trying to think of the ones we talked about before to give uh, our star an example of what we talked about. It was if you woke up in your bedroom. Yeah, but that was the and... last one. Okay. We had some really funny ones before. Oh, what oh, happens uh, like, when you the die? The ghost one. What happens when you die and you actually become a ghost? What would you do and shit? And that was a hilarious <laughs> conversation. Oh my God. We're just like, could you imagine... Um, you know how they burn stuff for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they burn, like, a fucking <laughs> computer for you, but you have no internet. <laughs> so you're just playing solitaire all day <laughs> on your fucking ghost computer. Wait, but if you're a ghost, like, shouldn't you be able to just use tangible things in life? Uh, Do you think? Do, do you think that's the case for a ghost? Well, I don't know. I would I would imagine if you're a ghost, then you just live in the real world, and then... But could you actually, like, press a button or something? Or, or do you, like, phase through when you touch stuff? Well, okay. So think about it this way. Yeah. Right? This yeah. is a... Why are people scared at like haunted houses when it's like a door creaks or something, right? Right, 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 right. But that would mean that like for the most part, like there so needs to be some kind something. of force. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think my theory was they can, but a very limited <laughs> amount. Like they need X amount of power. It's it's like a cool down, right? Interesting. <laughs> you can only lift a pencil or something. Yeah, shit, yeah. You chuck know, it you across know? the room. Yeah, you can lift a pencil or a pen or like shift a door or something like that, right? But then now you're on cool down. <laughs> you can't do that shit again for another hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> that's your refractory period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, if that's the case, would they even be able to use like real life stuff, right? Uh, I mean, if they could, everything would be fucked up. No, if you watch a horror movie, they can yeah. lift up chairs, they can slam doors, they can like drag people across the floor. Yeah, but they're not doing it all the time. So that that kind of in my mind, it makes me think like there's a cool down to this. <laughs> like if they, if they could do it all the time, why wouldn't they do it? Oh all yeah, the there time? would be there would for sure be like mischievous ghosts that just fuck around. Yeah, yeah. But, if they could do it all the time, they would. It may, maybe it's like a certain time period they have more power, like a like a eclipse or something. Or they're only allowed in the real world when you know in jail when they uh, let you go to the the <laughs> playground to get sun. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, here you can have a little bit of free reign, you know. And then that's why like. In certain spontaneous places in the world, it's like, yeah. oh, all right, you know, those occurrences can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there be ghosts everywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's literally just everything. Would just or maybe ghosts don't exist. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, our, our scenario was, what would you do when you're if you're a ghost? And we came with that's all funny. these like fucked up shit, like how like money is kind of fucking useless down there. Because they burn so much money, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, if everyone like, has a million dollars, it's, it's not worth anything. Or I imagine if someone doesn't burn it for you. Yeah. <laughs> You're just You're like, broke. Uh, or, or they, you know how they burn, like, a little paper house or something? Or uh, cars or stuff? But it comes back in, like, the exact same size. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, all right, here's a paper car. Yeah, so you're just, like, playing with a little car. <laughs> Wait, if you actually think about it, like, there's certain ghosts that would not get money burnt anymore. Because, like, after you pass a certain amount of generations, like, you're not going to fucking visit all your ancestors. Yeah, so we also thought about that. And we're like, those ancestors are preying on you. Like, they're, like, taking oh, your shit. <laughs> no, no, they were just waiting for one of their ancestors oh. to die. And then when they get money, they take their shit. <laughs> it's the hierarchy of needs, you know. Yeah. Generational wealth backwards. <laughs> yeah. 
And they only get to eat once in a while when we burn incense and shit. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's that's what we did one for one of the podcasts. It was, it was pretty fun, actually. Mm. Uh, so how was you guys' this week? Anyone want to volunteer to start? We can start. Uh, my week's pretty shit. I hurt my okay. back. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so I think on my last podcast, I already <laughs> mentioned about my back. Uh, but it still hurts and it's kind of annoying. So I went to physio. I, I was okay. First, the doctor told me to come back in because I did an x ray. Oh, yeah, you did tell me this. Uh, but he said it was just, he thinks it's not much. And he said that nothing really conclusive came from the x ray. I was like, why did you even call me back in? I was like, I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> He's like, yeah, there wasn't much that came out of this. And then I asked him, can you rent me a reference to get a standing desk at work? Because oh, my shit. workplace want, uh, needs one. That's pretty sick. Uh, and he was he wrote it for me, but then their office charges money for notes. So <laughs> can I have two dollars, please? <laughs> <laughs> so the I lady, my wallet. <laughs> so so the lady was like thirty dollars cash, exact change, and I was like, well, I have a fifty, and then she's like, oh well, you can go to the gas station next door and get you. I was like, I- I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm leaving now. She's like, oh, you don't want this? I was like, well, I have to go. So, because it was oh, during lunchtime. Like, was you, like, didn't t- you said no to the note. Yeah, I was like, well, I have to go to work so I can't just stay around and try to get you $30 cash. Right? Exactly. So I'm, just, I'm like, just gonna fucking leave. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no, I'll just leave. And then I left. And I- It's so strange how they like want you to pay cash and yeah no other option i was like i'm a visa like you well, want to take my visa probably, cause, probably cause like healthcare you know like you need a terminal a merchant you know and uh, you have to pay for like services and transaction fees and shit but to Just, not have yeah but that's all? yeah that's weird because they do have some like me- some medical records that you can request and those are like 200 dollars. but no one's gonna have of all oh, that but, cash with them but the they time. could probably build that too right if you t- get medical records yeah. like, isn't or that like, covered like literally any other form of payment aside from cash no but they o- at least when i asked them they only accept the cash no i mean like, like billing as in like it's covered under insurance so oh, yeah. you don't actually pay out of pocket yeah so then you don't need a point of sale but Thank but you. if that person didn't have insurance then they'd have to build them oh somehow. yes you're so right. anyways right regardless if the insurance covers or not maybe it's like okay yeah you gotta I don't know. Pre- yeah, but so, anyways, weird. I left because I I booked a physio right after, and that's why I was like, I can't stay and wait. I have to go right now. Like, I'm late for my appointment, <laughs> so I went to physio, and I just asked my physio, "Hey, can you let me know?" He's like, "Sure." <laughs> 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 so I was like, "Fuck that, I'm not going in." But yeah, my physio said it's just a bulging disc. Oh shit! Uh, what does that look like? Like a, is that like a herniated disc? No, a herniated is when it misplaced. Uh, no, is when it quote unquote blows up, not blows up, but like it leaks the liquid inside. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a herniated disc in a picture was, okay. So this is the disc, the blues of the disc. So yeah. if you can imagine the bones and the joints between each bones, those are the disc. So a herniated disc is when there's actually a rupture. Oh, got this. it. A bulging would be more similar to this where it pushes out and it pushes against the nerve and that's oh. where the pain so is So the next from. step to your injury would be a herniated, herniated disc. disc. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says it's bulging and he gave me pretty much a lot of like oh, core right workouts. Here. Oh yeah. Oh I guess herniated is when it comes out. Completely. Yeah, I was like I was like, you literally just Googled herniated disc and you pointed yeah. it's yeah, this is more like this. Yeah. Oh okay, <laughs> so a lesser version of whatever I just Oh it's saw. like less swollen, yeah, okay. But apparently there's a possibility, so if you see a cross section of this, there's a possibility of this actually tearing. Oh like, like it blows yeah yeah so like the inside is fluid and the outside's like a band like Got a yeah, giant yeah. elastic band it's like a water um, balloon yeah and so if it tears then it's a herniated disc yeah yeah if it bursts it's like i think this one's like almost about the burst or pretty practically bursting because it can't really quote-unquote burst like this is all mass right there's there's nowhere for it to go so then it would just rupture the or thin out the skin of it Mm. Uh, so a bulging would be something that just pinches it that's what he says he says that's or the physio diagnosed like that the, oh, the doctor just said just go to physio like there's nothing he can really right. do uh, so he just gave me a bunch of core workouts and some like stretches to relieve pain so how is that supposed to fix your bulging disc uh, so in certain positions it gives it more room for it to return back to its original space so when you like curl your spine or like stretch in a certain way, yeah. you give more room between this bone and this bone. So if there's more room. Oh, but like once it's ruptured, like the the yeah, you're structure fine. of it like can never restore, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it can. Really? I think it's just, uh, it's not like a torn 
CL, oh, any yeah, of the yeah. CLs. It, it's not like that. Uh, it's not that type of elastic band. So I think there is still a possibility because I think as long as it's uh, slightly like immobile. Yeah. 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 Uh, but so the thing is for me sitting actually hurts more than walking or standing oh damn yeah so he did say like when you walk you kind of shift this a bit and you give it more room to breathe or like let it go back to its original shape oh gotcha yeah so that's the annoying part so i can still do a lot of things but pretty much any time i do anything it, it, for example if i were to get up from this chair i'd have to force myself to flex my core and my glutes before i get up just to make sure that it doesn't hurt or it doesn't like impact that gotcha. portion of it well um so i could technically still like climb and volleyball and stuff but it just hurts and it's really annoying so that's why i'm not doing it i'm just gonna like give it Cover. some rest yeah give it some rest and then just don't focus. aggravate it more right yeah focus on the core thing pretty much right now the only thing i'm focused on is hold my poop in so i have to like flex my glute <laughs> all the time and then pretend i'm at the beach so i have to like try to flex my core all the time it, oh sounds, it sounds like you're working your Kegel muscles or your pelvic floor. Mm, maybe. I don't I feel know. Like they're different. I oh, think really? I'm, I, all I know is I'm thinking about my core and my glutes and trying to make sure whenever I do any movement that could curve my spine, I flex those to make sure it keeps the back part uh, stiff. Mm. Can you switch up the difference between your pelvic floor muscles and your Kegel muscles? Um. Yeah, okay. The sure. One's in the front, one's in the back. There. Boom. Oh, really? I think so. You guys want to hear this girl from Japan? Uh, Say hi. This hello. is for the podcast. You have five seconds. Five. Hello, pod. <laughs> say, wait, say it one more time. Hello, JV show. I don't understand. Hello to the pod. <laughs> what kind of Japanese is that? <laughs> Hold up, guys. I'm not sure what kind of Japanese that is. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's been my week. Uh, kind of annoying, but it's just annoying. Like the pain is yeah. annoying all the time, and yeah. Oh shit! Do you believe in like the, like the waxing moon and like all these random cycles of the stars and the moons and shit? No, like astrology. Because this mm. week I got, I feel like I got injured too. Oh, I got injured last week. So he's just, just trying like, to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin. He's just trying to uh, you. This, are you talking about the solar eclipse thing? Or? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a solar eclipse thing, but then apparently there's a bunch of other shit that's been happening. Like it's like the eclipse in like Mercury retrograde and shit like that. Uh, I swear. I heard <laughs> Mercury retrograde. Like those it is mer three Mercury retrograde. I know, but those three syllables, I feel like are always together. I've never heard of Pluto <laughs> retrograde. I've never heard of Mars retrograde. It's I always a Venus retrograde here, right? I, I, I hear swear, that sometimes. Every I no time idea. I hear anyone talk about this astrology bullshit, it's always Mercury and then specifically retrograde. retrograde. But I actually don't know what it means. Yeah, like, me I, don't I know, but I'm sorry. Every time I heard it, <laughs> it's not like moon metro retrograde. It's not like moon uh, urban grade or like any <laughs> other like random <laughs> term It's like this very specific <laughs> planet grade. with yeah. this grade. Yeah. Like it's always, it's always mercury and retrograde. <laughs> urban it's like what? What are the other grades? <laughs> yeah, what are the other yeah, planets? Yeah. What? What are the other terminology in this fucking big science? Okay. I've only heard three fucking words from you guys, and two of them are a compound word. <laughs> I fucking hate compound words. <laughs> right. But yeah. Anyways, anytime I hear that shit, I always hear Mercury retrograde. I was like, okay, I, I, I like tune out as soon as I hear that. <laughs> Okay, I'm not actually a believer of it, but yeah, sure. yeah. you have crystals in your pocket, don't you? <laughs> I do. Um, but you have a fucking quartz or some <laughs> shit at work, and I'll like sometimes my TikTok algorithm will talk about this kind of shit. Yeah, and be like, oh my god, you gotta watch out about this and that because like Mercury retrograde or like it's like rising sun of Leos or whatever bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Your right? Gemini is showing. <laughs> 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 and uh, anyway, so like, <laughs> so because recently was like the solar eclipse and like Mercury retrograde. I was like, oh shit! I wonder if this is why the, all this mm. random shit is happening. Yeah. Anyway, so I so my week was pretty shitty because uh, I like injured my elbow. Not really my elbow, but like specifically right here. I don't know what this is. The like almost like at the very back of your forearm. Hey? Yeah, like right in like closer to like my wrist than my shoulder. Yeah but past my elbow joint. Oh. My, my, my elbow joint is here. It's on the side of my forearm, like at the very bottom of my forearm. So mm. it, it felt really sore and like only in certain motions, like if I had to push open a door, it would like hurt. 
Oh, like oh, a sharp Jesus. pain. Like a like a sharp lingering pain, yeah. Oh. And it almost feels like I had no strength. Like have you ever had a rotator cuff injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Where you, you feel like it's very weak. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's kind of what it felt like. It's a very sharp pain and I felt like I had no strength. Almost like a partial dislocation kind of thing? Like a tear almost, yeah. Oh. Gripping the broomstick too hard, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Shit. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then uh, I went to the dentist today to get a fucking root canal. And then apparently it's too specific. So I got to get referred to a specialist to finish the job. How annoying, eh? Yeah. It's like you go to the specialist in teeth. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, come on, bro. Not specialist yet if you go to a regular dentist there's different kinds. okay so if you go to any medical professional that guy's the specialist in teeth <laughs> oh, right. I get what you mean. <laughs> he literally specializes in i mean i, I hate to say it, but like a portion of your body which yeah. is your teeth yeah. and then now he's to send you to another specialist yeah exactly yeah. so there's that um so yeah my like i got done this morning so my look my like chin and my lips are numb, like, numb and slightly oh. swollen not as bad as earlier Wait, um, is root canal when your root like sticks out a bit and it starts hurting? Or um, I don't is know. That what a- I don't. I don't think that's what a root canal is. It's like it's a procedure, is from what I understand it to be. Um, to remove inflamed or infected pulp on the inside, inside of, of your tooth. tooth. Yeah. Oh. So basically, what my dentist told me happened was that one of my nerves died in my tooth. I and so they have to basically clean out that infected pulp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like whatever, by drilling a hole inside oh. my teeth and cleaning that out. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's anyway. kind of like a, ca- kind of like a cavity. Kind of, yeah. But not exactly. How'd you injure it? Anyways, I don't know how I injured it. I chipped my tooth, right? And then I went to go get it filled. And then he's like, oh, did an x-ray. And he was like, oh, what happened? Like, did you get punched in the face or something like that? Because, uh, like, there's a bunch of trauma or, like, some sort of indication of trauma yeah. um, when they did the x-ray. And, yeah, there's basically they found out there's no nerve in my fucking tooth. And oh. so I can't feel shit on this one tooth. Oh. Yeah. Wait, then, what happened then? Did you get I, punched? I, I remember, like, the most recent event, I remember getting, like, elbowed coming down from a block. Oh, and that's the only thing I could think of. Otherwise, I have no fucking idea. Damn, that's rough. Yeah. So yeah, that's my week. Pretty shitty, but uh, not bad. It's so rough because like, this is your only set of teeth forever, kind of. Yeah. Thing. Right. <laughs> I just kind of. Well, actually, you know what's funny is um, I feel like a lot of people get veneers though. You know what veneers are? Yeah, what is that? It's like when they shave down your fucking teeth and they give you a whole new set of oh. teeth that are just perfect fake teeth. Oh yeah, people who don't brush their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's people who want like a dent, a different tooth shape. And yeah, different, exactly. Like it's not they, it's yeah. not like it's not like a clip on denture. Yeah, yeah, but like for like, them to get to that state, wouldn't they have to have pretty bad de- bad dental no, care? No, it, it it can be like an aesthetic thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like if you look at somebody's teeth and yeah. how it's shaped. It doesn't look exactly like how you would see Hollywood people's mouths to look mm. like the opacity of the two, the shape, yeah, the length, yeah, yeah. yeah, everything about it. You can just completely change it so it's more aesthetic. Oh, I see. I see. To yeah. American standards. No, I'm in the belief of that. Remember that breathe book I talked about? Mm-hmm. How it's like if you chew more and the whole mewing thing, you could actually get your teeth to look perfect, as in it's in the right like oh. position. Oh. Just because like our mouth is crowded from our mouth being too small and our teeth staying the same as it was back in the day. Oh, right? I see. Uh, but yeah. Damn. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. That's- but yeah, I just think like it's pretty sad that. Like this is the only set you get. Yeah. So if, if you don't. if you tear a muscle, it, it re- can repair, repair. most ligaments, not all, but most ligaments. If you have you know some minor tearing thing, mm-hmm. it can repair. But teeth, it's this yeah. is it like this until, is not your nat- You'll never get your natural tooth back. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for example, my grandma, she's still using her same set. Obviously, she has some like dentist stuff done to it. But still, it's like when I'm 80, I kind of wish I still have my own like teeth. perfect teeth. Yeah, and shit. yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's also something that I heard is that you can't repair your enamel. Yeah, yeah, yes. right. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy because you're always shaving it down little yeah. by little. Right. Yeah. No matter how many microns, it's still getting shaved down over yeah. the days and the months and the and years. And when you eat and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. Damn. All right, Viv. Hopefully, your week's been better than ours. My week's been pretty normal, actually. I, I did a Mercury retrograde. Damn. 
Yes, I have actually. It's really affected me. Oh, the <laughs> Jupiter tidal force must be yeah, counteracting the lunar rising in the <laughs> fucking north. <laughs> some shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I had a pretty normal week on Sunday. I did my friend Jessica's hair and makeup because it's her baby's one year birthday this week. And so I did that and we just hung out for a bit. And then I played volleyball. I had my regular volleyball gym sessions this week. And then I, oh, I met another dog when I was at my friend Jessica's house. Mm. Oh, the Lumi look like. Yeah, there was a dog that looked like Lumi. It was also the same breed as Lumi and it was yeah. also called Lumi. Whoa. And the guy was walking his dog. He's like, Lumi. And I was like, the what fuck? fuck? And then his dog, dog ran man? over to me. And I was like, what the fuck? This dog looks like Lumi. And I called Lumi to come back. And this dog kept like jumping up at me. And I was like, what the fuck? And he's like, what's your dog's name? And then, and then I was like, Lumi. And he was like, that's my dog's name too. Whoa. I was like, holy shit. And isn't, then he. Isn't this a rom com? I know. It seems like. <laughs> and he lives like Korean four drama. doors down from Jessica. And he's like, oh, I have another dog too. And he's also the same breed, but he's not He's not white. And he brought out his other dog. His other dog's name is Aura. Oh. And it's completely opposite of Lumi's colors. So where Lumi has brown, it has yeah. white. And yeah. where Lumi has white, it has brown. Like exactly the same oh, spots. I was whoa. like, what the fuck? It's so cute. If you said Taro, I would have freaked out. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is a fucking wrong call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Harold and Kumar that one's it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It's pretty that's normal pretty, week though. That's crazy. Holy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, like the exact same breed and name? That same breed, exact same name, and they had another dog that has completely opposite colors of Lumi in the do same you, spots. Do you think Lumi has a very basic name then? Or mm, it's not as special as I thought it was initially, because yeah. I think this is my like third time hearing another dog we called Lumi. Yeah. Did you name it Lumi after the stars? Mercury yeah. retrograde? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, what other common dog names would be? Luna. Like, or uh, Milo. I think Milo is a super oh, common yeah. one. Yeah, I think, I, I think to- Toby is. Toby is, it, is very is common. pretty common. Well, yeah. yeah. Or Tofu for tofu, Asian, yeah. Asian families. I think Taro is kind of special, but. No. I'm not <laughs> like, sure. any, any kind of, like, food, I feel like is not special. Like, yeah, okay, mochi, maybe. boba. Yeah, Nala is pretty common, I feel. Oh, yeah, Nala, yeah, For, like, yeah. white people. Dogs. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I know a lot of white people, they either name them real names. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, my friend. Come here, Susan. <laughs> 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 Just get an annoying dog called Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Karen. <laughs> Uh, or or they name them uh, after characters usually. I think it's usually named oh, for yes. characters. Oh, like too. Game of Thrones, all the wolves from Game of Thrones are typically now named. Like people name their dogs after them. Mm, um, but or might... any other characters in any other show, they'll name dogs after them. True. Yeah, my cousin's dog is named Khaleesi. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. That fucking Final. that queen. Yes, ma'am. Nice. All right. Uh, this week we're just gonna talk about random shit. I have I have one topic already queued up. Okay. So I was watching a video recently. It's by this YouTuber Veris, Versa, Versatum. Okay, let me let me let me not butcher it. Versatum. Let me. Is a poison that Verita- very similar name that I thought you were gonna say? Veritasium. Okay, how how would you guys pronounce this? Veritasium. Yeah. Yeah. Veritasium. Veritasium. Okay. He had a video about happiness, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Let me let me Ooh. dive into it. Pretty much. What they did in this video, they had, or not specific this video, but he found a study where they started back in 1938. Yeah. Uh, Harvard. Or Harvard. Not even close, but yeah. Uh, One of the schools. And it's a lady that teaches it, right? No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> <I tried again. laughs> so there were two studies happening. Uh, at first, they were separate <laughs> studies. And what they did is they tracked, I think one of the studies tracked like 70-some male or male from harvard another i think like 300 some kids from the school all boys or males and then they track their lives throughout the time so every year they'll be like get some blood sample and then ask some questions like how happy you are and things like that as those people got married and had kids they also extend the study to them right so at the end of the study it was like 2000 3000 people right 
uh and then they just pretty much track what actually made you happy and stuff uh and i mean obviously i think a lot of people will, will okay well, what, what do you think the, the answer is for what makes you happy so like some of these people they'll say at the time and usually they'll also ask this question when they're like older about to die and stuff like that wait but what are, are the these metrics? all just male you said male from the u.s pretty much yeah white males so then what is, what is the metrics of happiness though it's just whatever you feel like oh yeah what? yeah so like what makes you happy or what causes your happiness or yeah what the fuck Wait, I, I, don't get the, I don't understand the, stu- the the premise of the study here. Pretty much, they're just trying to track. Uh, like, but it's just they're just asking people. The people in the study okay. throughout their whole life. Oh. So, like every year, every two year, every three year, they'll ask the same similar gotcha. questions to see where their physical and mental well being is uh, throughout their life. Oh, okay. Because usually, if you ask someone very late in their life, their recollection of memories are not great, so they can't right. really say. For <laughs> great sandy, exactly what makes them happy. Who are you? <laughs> what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> exactly, right? So then the more comprehensive study is to ask them throughout their the life so it. then they can answer you know, in the present. Yeah, yeah. And and it, obviously this isn't this is white male in US, right? So I'm not saying this is for exactly everyone in the world, but it's it's kind of a cool study. Okay, I have two directions I want to go in my answer. Okay. One direction I want to go with I watched this TED talk like last week. I think this was last week where they talked about another study for the most important thing that contributes to people's happiness over their lifetime. Yeah. And the lady said that it was your social interactions and the people that you have in your life. Yeah. So the relationships in your life. Right. The other direction I want to go with this just simply just because you said males it like Young adult males in the states. I'm gonna say something like fucking sex or sports. No, no, no. Your your okay. first answer was it, right? All right. <laughs> like, like, like your first answer probably took the study from or took the results from the study. Mm. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, your guest. But okay. So in the in the video, there was some really cool stats I want to talk about. So one of them being, so uh general umbrella statement they made in the video was that being socially connected lets you live longer so when i heard that i was like oh really like do i gotta start, gonna start coming <laughs> out <laughs> uh, and then they started going through the stats so one of the cool stats was married men lives 12 years longer than unmarried men and Whoa. married women live lives seven shorter. years longer oh. than unmarried women oh what the hell yeah, so like if you're married and you're a guy, you live 12 years longer than if you were the same guy but not married. And then if you're a girl, seven years longer. Why is that? I don't know. This is just stats they pull out from the study. It's not It's not like they can say definitively exactly why that happened. If you're in a happy right. marriage. Uh, their, their explanation is that you have someone like covering your back. Like as in, like if you fall, someone there is there to you know get you up. Like, like mm-hmm. literally if you fall and you break your hip or something like that. Right. That's, that's their hypothesis of why mm. that stat came to be i feel like viv was about to say women live shorter when they're married <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh my god they're just stressed out as shit <laughs> that's 100 what i was gonna <laughs> say i was gonna say i swear i heard somewhere that people say that when women get married they live shorter lives and maybe that was just a pessimistic thing well, it definitely wasn't shorter like a lives speech. than men on average well hold up yeah this this another overall like non-stats related but overall mm-hmm. statement they made is that uh Yes, you may live longer if you're married, but only if you're in a happy marriage. Like if you're in an unhappy oh, yeah. marriage, then that that kind of fucks your stats up. Like mm-hmm. you might actually die earlier because you have a shitty relationship. Mm, that's interesting. So, On average, I'm curious if just in general, yeah. good and bad relationships, yeah. if males tend to live longer or live shorter lives when they're married, and if women tend to live longer or shorter lives when they're married. Like on average. Like, well, like that's, on that's average what, between their like, same race or different race? Any race. Any race, yeah. No, 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 not race, sorry. Gender, gender, <laughs> gender, gender. No, gender. this, that, Same. okay, from this study, again, I, I understand it's like white males in the States, but from yeah. this study, on average, it was 12 years longer. <laughs> Human <Right>. race. <laughs> <laughs> the ants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another cool one is being lonely is as dangerous as smoking half a pack of cigarettes a day or being obese. Oh, like if, if you if you turn that into a health like, like a physical mortality. health thing it's the similar thing and and like it's bad for your health yeah basically. yeah exactly but they, they oh, also yeah. explicitly that, yeah. said that being alone and being lonely aren't the same thing right 
Like yes, being, of course. I think I even wrote it down. So loneliness is a subjective experience of being less connected than you want to be with people. Right. Whereas being alone, you're content with how you are, but you're just gotcha. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's it's sick. the same as half a pack of cig or being obese. So you could be literally an Iron Man, as in like you try to be as fit as you can. Mm. But then if you're a lonely fuck, then you're literally as unhealthy, not as unhealthy, but it's almost like you it's smoke half a pack. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is, is it is like, okay, so I'm curious what this half a pack of cigarette measures is. Is it like your cardiovascular health I, over time? Is it like just half a pack of cigarettes takes this many years off your life? Or is it just like overall yeah. body degeneration? I have no idea. But what I would assume is the mortality effect. So, like, if half a pack of cigs took X amount of years of your life, right. that would be the same as being lonely, is what I assume they kind of generalize this to. Okay, yeah. Oh. So, not like a physical, like, yeah, like, like, you're, like your fucking lungs. Your I, would, I would actually apply it to your overall physical health. So, there is a part of that. So, I think this is, another, again, not proven, but a hypothesis is that when you are in a good relationship, you can de stress easier and your cortisol levels go down. <laughs> yeah your your cortisol levels go down so you're less in a fight or flight state so then you're like blood pressure is lower you're not as stressed out right and that's because you vent to like a good relationship you're able to talk to people and express yourself more right. uh, so then your stress level actually goes down too with a good relationship right not saying like relationship as in like like girlfriend boyfriend but like relationship with anyone right that's actually the reason why i would attribute this study to your overall health over your mortality rate y yes because but it has these effects on your body so it overall has the same effect that like smoking a pack of cigarettes would have to your overall health but, in but that sense i think the way they got the number of half a pack of cigs a day is probably to your mortality mm -hmm. like, right. they, like they, how many years yeah, does it, on yeah, average yeah, does yeah. it take yeah, off yeah, your, exactly yeah. like compared to right. a lonely person and a and a you know non-lonely non -lonely person, person. Right. i assume that's how they got those numbers i assume they didn't say like, like oh your be, vo2 max is this right. and then you're lonely your vo2 max is this right <laughs> like it's just like oh yeah if you're lonely right. like technically you know like your blah 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 goes down by this much this yeah goes yeah down by that much and then yeah. overall like uh, essentially your chances of dying is just becomes higher yeah. the fact that you're lonely mm. which i was like oh that's kind of that's kind of cool like i think this is the one thing i've in the past like three four maybe five years have worked towards improving but back then i didn't give a shit about it yeah you're trying to be immortal yeah like well no back then i was trying to be immortal but without thinking about this relationship side and how uh, it affects it like right. like physical pretty much not just physical but like if if i want to live as long as i can then i should consider all things not just the physical stuff but for example, if I start, but that's you know, like the first thing that comes to mind, though. Yeah, right? yeah, that's the first thing that comes to mind. But for example, if I want to live forever and all of a sudden I'm skydiving every week, yeah, then a little chances. like that's a little bit counterintuitive because your chances of dying is now high. Or if I'm like driving 200 kilometers an hour through the highway, right. then that's kind of counter. Or you're choosing a job that like requires you to drive a lot through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then those kind of like yeah, counteracts yeah. each other, right? That's fair. Whereas, so then I've never thought of the relationship as one side of it that mm. matters quite a bit. It matters to the point of it could take off as many years of my life as if I was obese or something like that. That makes sense. Oh, that's really? Uh, that's okay. an interesting way of thinking about it. Yeah. What I was going to say was, um, it, this reminds me of like a recent kind of little topic that I kind of looked into. And yeah. so I was just talking to somebody about like insulin levels spiking when your blood sugar goes up and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then I got, it got me kind of thinking... I was like, oh, so like, why, why is it that eating sugar is quote unquote unhealthy? And so first, I, my first thought was like, oh, cause it's like just empty carbs. Like it's not nutritional, blah, blah, blah. Right. But then I like looked into it. And so it goes back to like the blood pressure thing where when your insulin levels spike and like your blood pressure goes up or like whatever, then like it's hard on your heart and it degenerates your heart actually quicker than normal. And that's why it's not necessarily like healthier in that sense but i've always i've never actually thought of like eating sugar to be unhealthy as that mm. like, yeah i always I thought know, like actually. it would increase to obesity which would be like yeah yeah blah, that's blah, what blah. i thought too yeah but i guess it could it could keep you in that high cortisol state which increases your blood pressure yeah. and so if you're <clears> constantly doing that then it's like yeah. you're putting your body through this extra like yeah. wear and tear 
I, I think a lot of it comes down to that because even the sleep thing, the whole point of getting good sleep is to get out of that state and lower your cortisol levels and be less stressed when you get actually good sleep. But when you don't, you don't flush that out of your system. Like it's like you're almost at the same state of stress and then you increase through the day and at night you don't get to decrease sufficiently enough. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I also watched a science video on how the body creates an insulin resistance recently like the effects of sugar on your body uh, too whoa. and it was kind of cool because i didn't i didn't know exactly how sugar affects your insulin levels and how you eventually build an insulin resistance yeah and how that affects all the other processes in your body how it raises your cortisol levels eventually and so that's how i also just recently learned how sugar affects your body mm-hmm. and your health i kind of just believe people for that one it's like if it. Oh, yeah. it right, it's, let me it's, tell it's you like, about it's just like, oh, yeah, don't, <laughs> It's like don't fucking eat fast food. Don't yeah, eat yeah, too yeah. much fat because it's like yeah. bad, like clogs your arteries and shit like that. But. Well, to a certain point, but like okay. when certain amount of people, it's, it's almost like smoking. When enough right. people kind of say it, you're like, oh, okay, I think that makes sense. Uh. But maybe that's another industry playing conspiracy <laughs> oh, theory. I I doubt it, but that's true. Because at one point they said that smoking was healthy for you. Yeah, true. I mean, part of it is and the earth is flat. So I. Right. I do it believe is. that too. But, uh, <laughs> but I do believe that the nicotine in smoking is good for you. But oh, the I rest of the smoking is not good for Wait, you. Wait, tell me more. Why? Uh, so it's like an addictive drug though, isn't it? Like you Nicotine don't... is, but it also gives you higher cognitive function. It's like caffeine. Yeah. So it like, lets you function better. Yeah. So, okay, from my understanding of smoking, what fucks you up is, is the tar and, the tar and all that other Inhaling shit to your lungs. I, yeah, yeah. I'm actually not even sure if tobacco itself is bad or if it's how they make cigarettes is bad. So Are like, able to just quickly search this up? I'm kind of curious. Because, okay, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain my rationale to this. So technically, tobacco is just dried leaves. Okay. It's a leaf of a plant that's dry. I feel like anything you inhale is pretty, like... Yes, right? regardless. Unless exactly. it's like medicine. Like, that's why you have to, like, purify. Like, even, I, I don't think, like necessarily like inhaling like those puffer chemicals are good for you right but it's just like it's relieves whatever you need to relieve mm, yes right or actually i would because like it, it's like if those... anything that isn't pure like making your lungs more pure is technically a toxin right like even dust and shit like that around your house is like uh... what about inhalers you think inhalers aren't good for you technically i don't think it's good for you i i mean like it's just chemicals that you're putting in your body but it's it's like oh the the cost of like putting a chemical and in like the damage that inhaling something does to your lungs versus like subsiding this disease or this infection is like outweighs the factor of actually inhaling something i like i, I me personally i would th- i would say that inhaling anything other than just like clean air uh-huh. is not good for your lungs like there's no like you can't inhale something and be like oh that's supplementing my lungs oh no what but- if you had a lung disease yeah. and inhaling that medicine helps relieve that disease or yeah, helps like clear up the things yeah that are causing your lungs to suffer so th- think of it this way like if you had the if you had the chance to basically heal both uh heal that infection one by just taking like a a drug that you just eat versus mm-hmm. inhaling it which one do you think is like takes a bigger tax on your body but uh, i would argue that it's not that's not really a so like so- you can't they don't do the same thing essentially so yeah. it's not really the same kind of question because when you inhale things, the particles that you inhale are a lot smaller than if you ingest something and it gets into different parts of your lungs that ingesting something cannot. Right. So that's what I'm saying, though, is like if you had something that could cure that same thing. So the reason why you have to inhale it, right, is because of right. the, okay, the physiology yeah, of what yeah. you're saying, right? Yeah. So I'm saying that if you had the opportunity to ingest it, versus like inhaling it if they both did the same thing and cured the same thing do you think doctors would recommend that you inhale it or ingest it and that my argument is that they would be like oh ingest it because like it takes less of a toll on your body it's like if you could inject something in your veins or swallow something you would probably s- choose to swallow it right because it takes less of a toll like, it's like less invasive it doesn't on your replace body. the oxygen mm. that's the one argument i can make in my head what? No. because it doesn't replace the oxygen like if you were to inhale something 
part of the, the capacity in your lungs would be, would be replaced by the medicine and not oxygen that is good for you versus if you were to ingest something then there's no oxygen replaced in your blood and you just get supplemented with the medicine no i i think it's uh it's local dosing you 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 don't want to okay so say you have say you don't want to get tanned okay you put mm-hmm. sunscreen on your skin you uh-huh. don't drink sunscreen okay you can still get fucking tanned if you okay put okay just <laughs> i'm just trying to make a point here yes Okay, so you don't ingest it because you don't want that effects to affect your whole body. You only want local dosing. You only want it to happen at one specific part of your body only. And that's what inhalers or inhalants do is that they give a local dose, not a overall dose to your body. So when you ingest something, it gives the dose to your entire body. But sometimes you don't want that to the rest of your body. For example, if you have like asthma or something, they typically have some type of steroids that they inhale and it gives a local dose of steroids to the lungs rather than steroids to the whole body. Mm. that's my like rationale why they would use that rather than another thing is that you, you want a local dose inhale something doesn't it still go into your bloodstream anyways it does yeah yeah, yeah it does but but and that goes everywhere in your body you you still want the highest concentration of yeah, dose yeah. exactly mm. where you want it right so it's like if you have a burn on your knee you're not gonna rub ra- <laughs> like gonna go vapor on your on your hands <laughs> and, is, then, and, and then, then is, yeah knees. yeah exactly right. that's kind of the rationale of why they dose directly now yeah if there was a drug like you can pick exactly where it goes to then i think doctors will always pick that right but right but like do you, don't you think like inhaling something is just like bad like practice uh i don't know that's so hard to say so one thing i know is that if you can get specific drugs up your nose yeah uh, it crosses the blood brain barrier faster. Right. Yeah. It's so just then, faster absorption, right? Uh, well, it's more effective because the other thing about absorption is that the longer it is somewhere else in your body, it can metabolize it's and not less potent. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I wouldn't say it's always better. Like if you want something to actually cross the blood brain, blame, bro, blood brain <laughs> barrier, then sometimes maybe up the nose would be good. Or if you want something directly at your lungs, maybe directly to the lungs rather than the blood, then to the lungs. Hmm. But you know, I, I see your argument. It's like dust. Like everyone, you know, says they're allergic to dust, but everyone's allergic to dust. Like no one wants dust yeah. in their lungs. Dust is bad for you. Is your everyone lungs. really allergic to dust? Everyone says they're allergic to dust. <laughs> I mean, no, okay, no one. Like on the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I see. It's I like, feel like some people can get really fucking dirty sorry. and dusty and nothing okay. fucking happens to them. <laughs> That, that's a bad thing my mind. I should say no one's not allergic mm, to dust. Fair. Like it'll yeah. affect everyone in some way no matter what. Right. Because so, I get allergies from like playing at EVP sometimes. Oh. <laughs> well, it's it's just because it's a foreign thing that shouldn't be going in you. Right? right. So theoretically or technically your nose hairs should stop it before it goes into your like throat and then before and then your throat saliva should stop it before it goes to your lungs. Or it can be even like touching your skin. Oh, dust on your skin. I'm not sure about yeah. that. Like, I don't think people are naturally allergic to that. I, that I that part's different. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Because technically, d- dust is skin. Yes. That dust is dead skin. So if skin dead skin touches your and skin dirt and your and uh, sweat, yeah, I th- I think it's more of a you, you problem for that one. <laughs> I think I, what I'm saying is like inhaling dust. Everyone's allergic to that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dust on your skin. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I think tobacco is still bad for you. I think the cigarettes is worse because they process it. But I think tobacco is still bad, apparently. All parts of the tobacco plant are poisonous. But <laughs> <laughs> You literally fucking... No, but, okay. This is why I don't like these uh, sites that just say this. Because te- cause technically, web cause technically <laughs> everything is poisonous to you, right? With a high enough dose of anything, it's poisonous True, to you. Even water. Yeah. Right, so... Yeah, okay, like, pork is poisonous to you, right? Uh, like, beef is poisonous to you. So it's kind of hard to make and this fish. overall statement. If they said po- if they said t- tobacco is poisonous to you at X amount of dose, then I'd be like, okay, that makes sense, right? right. Uh, but they probably can't say that because of the... What's the what's the one? Not mad to do. What's the other one that's against smoking? Some... Moms against drunk driving. Nah, not, not oh, mad to do. Like the, the fucking thing that There's, makes you post the, those pictures of the lungs and shit. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but <clears throat> I, I know for sure the nicotine in it is good for you. Interesting. Uh, which is natural in tobacco leaves. Oh. Uh, but um, oh, I think cigarettes itself are worse because they process the shit out of that. 
Mm. I think like did you, when you guys went to school, did they ever show you all the shit they put into cigarettes? Like, oh my god, do you guys yeah. know who like I think her name is like Tara Fox or something? <clears throat> this is a porn star or something? No. Oh, it's this lady. Oh, maybe she was just like popular in my area. I think her name was Tara Fox or it's, it's something Fox. We search up something Fox. Tara <laughs> <laughs> Fox comes up. Smoking. Smoking. <laughs> <laughs> And then something and her name is her name is something Fox. Her name is like Tara Fox. And then and at least in my elementary school and my whole era, everyone knew about her, so I thought she was like some Is she one of the ladies without a throat? And yeah. they have the thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm, that's she was crazy. known in my elementary school as like some lady that smoked a lot <coughs> and she had to remove her voice block. So yeah, she yeah. had to had a have she had a hole there yeah. and had to have a machine right here. And yeah. she came in like every single year yeah. to do a speech and warn kids about the dangers of smoking. And I was like, holy shit. She's like, this That's is what crazy. she does as for her living. Like, she goes around and does inspirational speeches oh to, like, God. warn kids not to smoke. And may- I'm guessing maybe it's because her daughter went to our schools. So everyone's like, your mom's the smoker. Oh like, you're gonna- and every single time she got sick, people would be like, oh, you're turning into her. <laughs> oh, holy shit. But I thought, I thought she- everyone knew about her, but I guess not. <laughs> well, no, I actually don't blame the kids because... Like, as a kid, you don't understand how cancer works. You're like, can it spread and shit? So then you, like, try to stay away, right? Because cancer sounds like the scariest thing yeah, in the world, right? Yeah. And I remember when I saw that as a kid, I'd, like, <clears throat> hold my lungs and, or poke my throat yeah. right here and be like, holy shit, I'm her. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're a fucking bully. <laughs> <laughs> Never be like this. Uh, yeah, the crazy thing is I think some of those people still smoke. That's crazy. Like they smoke through like this thingy exhale? or like Holy still shit. this. And and the crazy thing, I think okay, they're not specifically trying to show this, but I think the crazy part is that's how addictive it is for some people. Fair. Like is how it? addictive it is is like you're literally dying and you still want another puff kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you get withdrawal symptoms yeah, from you do. <clears throat> like the same as alcohol? No, 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 no. For nicotine. So when alcohol you, you literally die. Yeah, when you stop alcohol drinking. you can die oh, really? if you yeah. stop. If you're an alcoholic and yeah. you're actually addicted, yeah. if you stop right away, you can actually die because your body relies on the alcohol to stimulate it. Yeah. And oh, then fuck. if you don't get it, you can get like your hands will shake yeah. and you can get brain like fog and your head will though, get right? no no no. So headachy. so alcohol and ketamine are the two that if you go cold turkey you'll die. Oh. Yeah. Whereas you nicotine you could go cold turkey. And it's just your habits. That it's just makes really it hard. Difficult. It's just yeah. It's just oh. very difficult. It's like you but walk you can't by have someone nicotine withdrawals. You not you, to that extent. You you probably do, but you won't die from oh, it, right? So it. like a, a doctor can probably responsibly recommend stop smoking, but they may or may not can responsibly recommend like go cold stop turkey on drinking. drinking. Oh, yes. like that. For right. drinking, if if you want to <clears> quit and you're an alcoholic, you actually have to slow like down off. and you, you can't go, quit. You have to find God. Turkey. You have to go God. through all the steps, and you got to find God. For it to work. Okay, speaking on that nicotine topic, yeah. so um, on TikTok and stuff, there's this new thing called Zans or whatever, and it's basically like nicotine strips that you, it's like chewing tobacco. Oh, you stick it up your gum, right? Yeah, you stick it on your gums, and yeah. you basically like you absorb a bunch of nicotine, and people yeah. are using this as like pre workout for more, like higher function and shit like that. Oh. And I'm like, holy shit, that's kind of. I have I have thought of using nicotine gum. I was like, just trying it out. <laughs> you ain't gonna live as long as you think you are, bro. <laughs> but apparently, it helps you cognitively in insane, Drink like coffee a or really high shit. amount. Let me let me buy you a, t- a tin of Zans. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't want to fuck up my gums or teeth or anything like that. Like, like. No, it's not. It's not tobacco though. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. That's kind of weird. You put it right Don't there. you get a patch? I thought about it. So, like, some profs actually use it. What? Nicotine patches? nicotine patches or gums just just because they want they know the effects and good effects of nicotine and this, they're this just on to put, this guy said yourself. he doesn't want to put shit on his gums but he's like yo but I'm gonna buy nicotine gum you're literally treat right. it it's different though you should Pavlov yourself what was that put a nicotine patch or eat nicotine gum every single time you do something difficult but you want to do it something mm. that brings you towards some big goal or some yeah, yeah, shit yeah, yeah. Oh, and so whenever you need to do this task yeah. you'll crave doing it because your body will associate it with the craving of nicotine yeah and i have off yourself don't want to make myself addicted you'll be more to stuff. successful <laughs> <laughs> don't think so you can run a science experiment no thanks <laughs> i have thought like if i ever get really stressed out with work or anything i might think about it but that's Wait, the extent or pavlov nicotine oh. well like it's the same <laughs> thing it's about the guy <laughs> but but so far <laughs> everything feels better <laughs> so far nothing has been 
too like difficult or stressful enough for me to result to doing that or to resort into actually doing that. What was the most stressful moment of your life? Um, when my first kid, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? I was going to say when my first kid. <laughs> uh, I don't. You couldn't pick which staircase. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, honestly, probably school. Probably mm-hmm. at some point, maybe third year or something, when I had like five exams and two assignments in one week or some shit like that. Because uh, other than that, I don't know. I feel like real life, it's not. It, it gets stressful, but I think it's a different type of stress. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but a lot of it is just waiting too, which is itself stressful. But if you can figure out ways to get around the waiting game, then nothing in life is, I think, is that stressful. As in, like, unless you're a, like a race car driver or an astronaut, you don't need to do anything like instantly right now that's so stressful that's like pushing you to do something. It's usually like, oh, I applied for this job. I'm like, you know, worried if I'm going to get it or not. And right. Stuff like that. I agree. But there's nothing like, hey, there's a gun to my head type of stress or anything, yeah. or anything immediate. Except, like, with infinite, basically, you're saying, like, with infinite time, like, you can basically do anything you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what would you say is your most stressful moment in school? Probably. That was the last time I was really stressed out. Because I think, other than that, like, nothing's really happened in my family <clears throat> that I've been really stressed out about. Because, mm. like, my last family death was, like, I think during school. Like, my grandpa yeah. and my aunt passed away while I was in school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, no one's really passed since. That's interesting. Because, uh, like, when I think of stress, right? Like, anything that I have control over, I would feel like I'm not as stressed. And I get stressed more so for stuff that's, like, outside of my control. But then now I'm like, oh, if it's outside my control, like, why am I stressing over it? Yeah, and oh, I agree. and I, I think, think the, those, the other thing is if it's outside of your control, you're probably waiting for a yeah, result or exactly. something like that, right? So I think that's the only real scenario is like I'm waiting for something to happen. Fair. So if you can distract yourself enough, it doesn't feel that stressful. But it's mm. it's different. It's not like I'm like in a SWAT team. I think I assume their type of stress is a lot different. Oh, yeah. I feel like my last, like the most stressful thing would probably be like overcoming some sort of injury or something or like yeah like what you said Mm. with uh like the waiting thing about like yeah when a family member is like you know yeah yeah, yeah. like in need or some shit yeah i mean it's different i I don't think we really get performance stress i I, i'd be curious to ask like a police officer or a firefighter or something right like the stress stress environments like that yeah because they have a operational stress right right or even even nurses Hmm? What, what do you mean by operational stress? Like if they do the wrong thing or take the wrong action, someone might die. Oh, right? I feel fair. like that stress weighs a lot differently. I guess than, somebody else's death or when somebody else's matters in your hands, but, it is a little bit more stressful. Well, it's also, you have to make a decision right now. Right. Like a judgment call basically. Yeah. Whereas like, for example, if I have a stressful situation, I want to oh, apply for this thing. For I, I have a lot of time. I can think about it. I can think through it. Right. But those guys, it's like, Here's like, the scene right here, right now. Yeah, you have to do in your front field. Yeah, yeah, you have to do the thing right now and get the best outcome right now. Right. right. I feel like that's a way different. Stress, it is right? true. Mm-hmm. I think that's maybe closer to like an intense version of a uh, exam anxiety, maybe where it's like you have to do something with some type of direct outcome. But even then, I don't get like I don't on get, the spot, right? Like yeah. no preparation, really. Like yeah, yeah. almost like a like an interview, right? I feel like that stress would be a more intense version of an interview mm. type of stress. Do you think they'd be stressed about like dying on the job? I don't think they're thinking about that. At yeah. the moment. Oh shit! I think they're thinking about the optimal outcome with the situation they're given. I guess like if you go into that field, like you're just yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like if you were scared different. to die, then you wouldn't go you into wouldn't that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, you'll hesitate too much to do the right thing if you're scared to die. I, I think in, in their field. Well, how about you? When's the last time you were super stressed? Actually, I was trying to think of it. And I can't... I don't really know. I would uh, The, the breakup? Ones, or? I don't... I wouldn't call it stress, though. Oh. I think that that's just sad. I, the one example that I thought of was when I had my car accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty fucking stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to move my car and get it towed and shit. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. of yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But aside from that, I would say normally I also don't really stress about things because I feel like okay, if it's in my control, then I'll do my best. And like with things I have to do with deadlines, like work or even in, even in school, I didn't really feel that stress at all because mm. I was like, okay, I was the type of student that did my assignment literally right after I was assigned it. Yeah. And then like 
I had a regular study schedule and everything, so I was never, I never felt like overwhelmed or stressed or like mm. I couldn't do anything. I never went into any exam thinking like, oh my god, this, is I'm not gonna do this or whatever. Because yeah, I just never had that experience. But I think that on a regular day basis, even though I normally don't feel stressed, mm. my body carries a lot of stress. Like what do you mean? over like a lot of small things, like I mentally don't feel it or don't think about it, but I like clench my jaw a lot, or I mm. like <clears throat> yeah, I clench my jaws a lot, and I shrug my shoulders a lot, and I tense up my like traps a lot, like all the time, pretty much. Like unless I'm consciously thinking about relaxing it or I'm trying to sleep, then it's pretty much tense like most of the time. Yeah, and I know that's how you, I carry stress, but I don't know where it's from actually. The Mercury thing. Right, right. <laughs> well, actually, I can see how work deadlines could be stressful, especially if you're newer to the job. I can see that I being think stressful. I give myself enough leeway. I'm like, okay, I'm new. Yeah. I'm gonna make mistakes. No, well, what I always think of is if there's something I have to do and there's some deadline. Uh, yeah, you're right. I usually give myself enough time, but if I if I don't know how to do it, I kind of personally think it's also like a training issue too. So I have right. to like, talk to people or try to figure out how to do it. And then if they just want me to figure out, then I'll be like, all right, I'll poop something out for you. Whatever it is, it is, right? Yeah. yeah. That's and I'm like, if it's important enough that I can't, add, there's zero room for mistakes, then you shouldn't have given it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's True. Right. Like, it, it's almost like you're just confident with what you have to just basically do the best that you can do. And like, yeah. that's like, given all the circumstances, it's like, all right, well, this is the best I could do. So it's whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, I think a lot of people put a reflection of their work to be like, oh, that's like their worth. Yeah. But I, I don't know like there's just so many factors around it too right like at work if you are like new to a project or like whatever it's like somebody else gets fired and you have to end up helping them finish their work and maybe you know like you just don't have enough no, like reasonable time to like look into like the backstory and like everything that's happened it's like okay well I did the best that I could do based off of like the scenarios right and I feel like there's just a lot of external stuff that also plays into account so like, I think the part that where people kind of take it personally yeah. when, you know, a project doesn't go good or whatever, that it's, I don't know. Yeah. Like, unless you actually really fucked up and, like, didn't start until, like, the day before. Yeah. And you had a fuck ton of time, like. Yeah. But even then, even if I do make a mistake, I, I feel like it's nice knowing that I want to say 90, maybe even, like, 95% of the workforce doesn't even know what the fuck they're doing most of the time. True. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, kind of like, okay, well, we're all in the same boat here. Yeah. Kind of makes you feel a bit more relieved. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, there is a stress in, like, if you have to take a shit real bad. And you can't. And you can't at and the moment. Like, oh, God. I that's don't. pretty stressful, but it's a different type of stress. <laughs> yeah. It is stressful, though, because it's, like, it is kind of within your control, but it's kind of not. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of stress, I feel like it's a bigger, more like <coughs> over looming thing, overwhelming uh, feeling. Like I can't, like super help. overwhelming. Yeah, like an yeah. overwhelming feeling, and I can't really. I don't have much grasp of the situation. Well, that's really interesting. So I, I'm curious what your guys' perspective is on anxiety, like anxiety versus stress. Like, how do you guys see that? Because that's just. I feel like recently, within the last like six months, I've been hearing stuff about anxiety a lot uh. and like for me i personally can't fully empathize or understand anxiety in a sense that like i know your body will feel a certain way about something that you know makes you feel uncomfortable and like gives you stress right but it's like oh can you do something about it if you can then like okay do something about it but if you can't then it's like oh like why are you worrying i i think it's a combination of stress and fear is what anxiety is fear yeah, mm. it's stress, stress and fear that it manifests itself into a physical thing is how I kind of see anxiety. So like you're stressed about something and then your fear. Fear is either, you know, you don't know how to do it, you can't do it, or you don't have enough time to do it. And then both of those things overwhelm you and then that manifests into a physical thing. I agree. Like a physical thing as in like you have higher heart rate or, that's you know, something like too. that. That's, mm. that's how I see anxiety as. I was going to say stress also has a high heart rate but when i think of anxiety stress can be without a higher heart rate but anxiety one of the main feelings would be having a higher heart rate and there's also a more of a mental piece to it i feel for anxiety over stress so you can be physically stressed and you can feel like stress looming over you you can have like a stressful lifestyle but you're not 
consistently running in circles. Unlike when you have anxiety, you're very much in your head running in circles. And it's more like a, it's definitely like the fear part where your heart rate is beating faster. You're running in circles. You're panicking. You feel more out of control in the moment. I, uh, have you ever been overwhelmed by a lot of tasks or a lot of things that they do? Yeah. And then have some of those things been like things you don't even know how to do, but you have to do them. Yeah. <clears throat> I think when that overwhelms you to a certain degree and you start feeling it physically, that's anxiety. I feel like like that that's the progression. What I kind of explained is first mm-hmm. you feel overwhelmed and then mm-hmm. there's also stuff you don't know how to do within all the tasks you have to do. And then you start thinking about it too much and it's almost like your body can't even act anymore because there's so many things, you're overthinking everything and oh, you can't go to the next step. Interesting. Even though if you were to be completely logical, the next step is to do this, next step is to do this, next step is to do that. It's just, there's 800 steps, but you have to start with number one, right? But then- you look at 800 instead of you look at step 800 instead of step one and you get overwhelmed by you like right. all the steps before that like realistically like if you just kind of took a step by step piece by piece it just like be it'll slowly go away you know step one all the way goes to like 100 mm-hmm. 200 300 but then i i think that when people feel anxiety they see it all as a whole and they get overwhelmed mm-hmm. by it and then they can't even act they're yes. so they're paralyzed by the overwhelming like yes. like yes. analysis yeah. paralysis yeah and then i feel like that's when they get like anxiety where it's like i don't know what to do there's so many things I so do. what do you do about it i mean i haven't felt it in a while but i just i don't know, just start with step one. Oh, like i think the last time i felt it, i i think i mentioned it before it was i think it was during covid and i think i just wasn't doing enough stuff like i was just doing nothing and i felt anxious that i wasn't doing anything oh mm. shit uh but then once i you know started picking up projects again and started doing stuff with my time uh it kind of just went away so wh- why do you think that made you anxious though uh, I think I value usefulness, and I felt like I was useless. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of that's kind of cool because I feel like that relates back to like your personal worth a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Interesting. Like I, I, I mean, it's not great, but it, it sucks to judge people by the stuff they right. do. But it still it still characterizes you. It yes. builds your character of who you are, right? Yeah, yeah. So to me, that stuff mattered a lot. Like who I am as a person, the character, the things I can do. Yeah, and because of that doing nothing felt like I was Diminishing going back. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't gaining. I wasn't advancing in my life. I was just doing nothing. Well, that's so interesting because my experience of anxiety is more less to do with my self worth in that way. And from what I've concluded it to be would be over stimulation. Yeah. No, I, I felt that yeah. version of it before too, but the last time I felt it was because oh, okay. of that. But I, I I feel like both can create a version of it. So for example, in my case, I was anxious because I felt like I wasn't doing anything, and there's all these things I could do, but I wasn't doing any of them because I was so overwhelmed with which one I should do. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm, so it's like that makes a lot of you sense. have all these different cakes. Which one should you eat? But you can only eat one, so you want to pick the best one that you can possibly eat. Right. But then that you know that that indecision could yeah could screw you over. Right. 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 You're just like oh. Like it's like almost like FOMO a little bit, right? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. You get that? Yeah. So it, it's it's similar to the way you say "well overwhelmed," but for me it was different. It was yeah. just a different manifestation of what it was. I get it. Yeah. Mine came like randomly. Like there's twice when it came when we went out. One was after a vault when we went out for volleyball practice, and we went yeah. to Kodaway after. I think it was Kodaway. No, it was Fohu and Pastor in the West Side. Yeah. We were all just eating, and all of a sudden, I had an anxiety attack. <laughs> oh shit! Was it a stomach? No, it's so weird. Okay, so the experience was, I forgot, I think it was Samson actually that was right across from me or it was either Samson or Tony that was right across from me yeah. and they were talking directly to me and then literally like one second it felt like this, how you're yeah. talking to me right now and then the next second it felt like someone put a fishbowl over my head Yeah. and then I couldn't really differentiate you talking directly to me versus all the sounds in the restaurant right. and every single sound was ex- the same amount of loud list. Oh shit. Like you know oh. how your brain can like- yeah. Yeah. tune out background sounds to like focus on the person that you want to focus on but it was like all of a sudden with like just like that yeah. Like chaos every, yeah chaos i could hear every single sound in the restaurant all with equal amount of loudness i couldn't focus on whoever was talking to me directly and then everything was like like just way too overwhelming did you get bit by a spider i don't know i, I wish i did <laughs> <laughs> you know <Are> you spider-man <laughs> yeah that's what happens for spider-man yeah, yeah and the same thing happened another time at david's birthday dinner one time at the rinku oh shit yeah it was so well, that was probably a long time ago then yeah it was quite a long time yeah ago. i i think i would 
not not to the anxious part, but stress. I think if someone in my family passed away, I would probably get stressed. Or it's a weird type of stress. I think it'd be a I don't want to do anything stress. Uh, oh, like you're just like uh, okay, and like hear me out. I and this is based off of like no actual facts, but speculation. Okay, yeah. so do you think? Okay, you know how dopamine is responsible for like your motivation, like yeah. feeling like happiness and like willingness to do stuff and all that, right? Yeah. So, I read that. Okay, having too much dopamine, having a regular dopamine, or having very low dopamine, yeah. like, has very different effects on your body, oh, right? Yeah. And so, actually, having way too much dopamine, yeah, is actually bad. And okay. then having like very little is very bad as well. Like, if you want to look it up, very it, little is ADHD, right? Um, I, I vaguely recall depression. it. Uh, too much dopamine is linked to being aggressive and having trouble controlling your impulses. Dopamine imbalances are also related to ADHD and addiction. Having low levels of dopamine can make you less motivated and excited about things. Right. So then, um, so then, do you think like maybe stress or like when that situation happens, there's some some sort of bodily chemical in your body that releases that basically decreases your dopamine level. So it's like, oh, like I'm not really motivated to like do anything. I don't want to do shit, you know. And that's not like is that stress like you know how certain certain like hormones or um yeah yeah and not enzymes hormones or like whatever is like in inversely proportionate okay right like if mm -hmm. this thing goes up in your body yeah, this yeah. goes down yeah right yeah. and so in those situations it's like oh something in your body goes up which in turn causes <laughs> dopamine to go down which makes you feel that way yeah like cortisol nor norepinephrine norepinephrine but the, the question is what's dopamine? what's the increase that's causing the decrease right because mm. i don't think mm. the dopamine is decreasing it on its own it's something you're right it's probably yeah. something that's causing it so i think in a state of grief i don't know what would cause it but yeah in a state of grief i would just not want to do much and just be sad for a bit yeah that's true yeah but, like if or would you be stressed because <laughs> it's cortisol right uh I'd be stressed if I had like other commitments I have to do. Mm. Like if I have to still go to work and not be able to grief and all that stuff. That's what I think at least. Mm. Like I, I'm fortunate, knock on wood, like it hasn't really happened in a while. So I've had to think think about that. Like no one really close to me has really passed in a pretty long time. I think the last person was just my grandpa. But that was like, I think almost over 10 years ago already. Dumb. Yeah. That's good. But I mean, I, I feel for the people that that, that would happen to, right? And yeah. it's like, for example, if my dog ever passed away, which is probably, like, I don't know, like he's he's already six, six yeah. right? So like, I don't know, After I don't know how much longer he has, right? But I I would be pretty I would be pretty mm -hmm. upset after yeah, that, right? for sure. And I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna take time off and stuff, probably or something like that. Yeah. Do you know if you if your fight or flight kicks in if you're Cortisol and your norepinephrine. Your cortisol's high. Goes like, up. Your cortisol's I would imagine definitely super your high because dopamine would go down. Yeah, I don't know about dopamine. I'm not sure. Well, that's not true. So you might get into a fight or flight response when you're going down a roller coaster. So you're very hyped up and stuff, but you're like in a state of partial danger. So you're in a what should I do kind of thing. So then, but you're still happy. I assume. Mm. Right. Like your your cortisol I, will go up because it's a physically stressful situation when you're going through like X yeah. amount of G's of force, right? So your blood still wants to pump at a really high rate with constricted blood vessels. But then dopamine, I don't know. Like I I'm would pretty, argue that it might depend on what kind of like happy neurochemical because there's like four different ones and they work mm, differently, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But definitely the cortisol had to go up if yeah. your, your flare fight response That's is going up. That's what I think of at least. That's how I think of it. Uh, anyways, going back to what we were... Unless you guys want to keep going on this. If not, uh, another stat that came out of this video was kind of cool. So being alone increases your heart disease and stroke. So the rate of you getting a stroke by 30%. So like your chances of getting a heart disease or stroke increases by 30% when you're lonely. Oh, like wow. not, not, the, not the actual... Like being lonely. Not like not being alone, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's kind of crazy how being lonely can... But it kind of makes well, sense. I, actually, I, I feel like this all has to do with, like, going back to this a little bit. Like, the, the regulation of your hormones yeah, and, like... Yeah, yeah, the, the cortisol to it, I think, affects that right, a lot. Right, 
Yeah. Well, that is pretty crazy. But it's it's a crazy stat because I was like, wow, I can't believe. Well, obviously they had to make a lot of generalizations to come up with these numbers. Right. But it's still kind of cool that there was some way to come up with these numbers. And usually when they come up with these numbers, it's a good enough regression. So that means there's enough statistical evidence for them to come up with some type of number within that sample size, right? Right. Um, I'm curious. To, I'm curious to know. Yeah. Um, what your opinion is on like placebo? Like, let's say. Yeah. In oh your my mind, god! You, I've been reading so much about this. You train this your week. mind yeah. to be like, oh, I, like I don't feel lonely, right? Like you don't think you're lonely, but then deep down, like, are you really lonely? You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you yeah. could be unconsciously lonely, but but then you, mm, right? could you though? I, I think know. you can. I don't. I would argue that you can. I don't think so because. Loneliness is a subjective experience, so you experience it at a conscious level, no? I would argue that you can because there are people that aren't, like, the easiest way I could say it is that there's people that aren't in tune with how they feel, and they don't reflect enough, and they could think that they feel a certain way, but until they take the time to really get to know themselves and reflect deeper is when they can realize that, oh, this this habit or habit A, B, C, D is actually a reflection of me being really lonely, when I thought it was me being, like, outgoing and shit like that. Mm. I don't know. I like, I see what you're saying. It's almost like that person doesn't understand the scope of what lonely is. Or the but, results of their habits and their routine and perhaps the way that they express themselves mm-hmm. feels really outgoing and like they surround themselves with friends and shit all the time but so they don't feel lonely. Wouldn't that, that mean sense? they consciously do not know they're lonely, but it doesn't mean they're not consciously lonely? Wait, what? Yeah, wait, wait, what? what? So, so, <laughs> so you're saying they have all the symptoms of being lonely, right? But they don't know that they're lonely, right? So would that mean that they, they just don't know the the definition or the true term or how the loneliness feels, but they're still feeling the same thing? Like if you went to them and then you explain to them all these feelings, then they have the epiphany of saying, "I feel those feelings." Oh, I was lonely this whole time. You know. So, so yes, I, I'm just thinking. So, like, they consciously, they are consciously lonely because they feel those things consciously, but they just didn't know the definition of it. No, no. that would mean you're unconscious of it, right? Yes, mm, I would okay, argue okay, no, okay. not that. Okay. Because there are some people that genuinely feel like they live a very fulfilling and happy life, but maybe five years down the line, or maybe one day they have time to go and sit and reflect with themselves, and they realize that, like, oh. The habits that I've been having in place for the last six months or for the last two weeks yeah. or whatever have actually been a result of me feeling like I have and like I'm lacking in some way, some form in my life in this way. And I didn't realize it was because I was reflecting that because I was actually lonely, but I felt completely fine. I felt completely happy, but I didn't realize that this was actually the source deep down type of shit. Mm. Well, it's kind of... So does that mean like you're not lonely at that point, but then when you're consciously aware of it, then that makes you lonely or what? what you I, I'm curious because like how would your body react would be, okay, so my goal is how would your body react to that? So for example, if someone was isolated oh. their whole life, would their body react any differently? Right. Like if you just lived by yourself, yeah. period, yeah, but, yeah. like there's no way to not be lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then maybe you don't feel lonely in that sense because you don't know like what lonely is exactly mm. you've only because like what i'm thinking of okay let's let's take a step back what's the big picture i the, have an argument for this the, okay. okay wait do you want do you want to go first no you okay go ahead. so take a step back and what's the big picture of what i see this is my opinion of the big picture the big picture is i want to live as long as possible loneliness is a possibility that decreases my lifespan right mm. so if i take a step back and i say okay that's something that could decrease my lifestyle i'm gonna go and fix it but if it's something i don't even understand or know like i've been isolated my whole life then it wouldn't matter if i was conscious or unconsciously lonely because it didn't like you've never experienced that yeah yes i get completely what you mean but i think if you're thinking about your body physically (laughs) yeah your body can still feel it without you being aware of it because the one example that i have that makes me understand it well is that your body can feel stressed without you feeling stressed. So exactly right. like my experience. Right. Like I mentally don't feel stressed, but I know that my body feels a lot of stress regularly. Right. And somebody can live a very stressful lifestyle and that can be very normal for them. Like you're a very, imagine you're a guy yeah. that has always just like been in solitude. You've yeah. always just like worked day and night, every single day, ever since you're a kid up until you're fucking 70. Yeah. Okay, that's very normal for your life. You don't feel stressed. This is just how life is to you. This yeah. is how you know life is to be. But then like, 
that your body would still feel all that stress from you doing all that stuff, even yeah. though you don't, even though that's normal to you. Yeah, and even yeah. Though, yeah. Can you look up the definition of loneliness? Yeah. I mean, I did read it before, but... <laughs> so I'd imagine in both cases, if somebody was lonely, but they never felt lonely, just like if somebody was stressed, but they never felt stressed, yeah. if you had one day by yourself to like relax or to reflect or some shit, you'd feel all that come crumbling down, maybe. I think, yeah, at, the, at that realization of it. But was it at that exact moment that... Like the moment that you were conscious of it was everything going downhill. Mm. Like if you if you never hit that point in your life, would your life just be I would argue that if you even though you mentally and consciously don't feel any issues with it, yeah. your body would still have the health effects of ha- mm. having that. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay, I mean like, I, I I'm not sure cuz I think it's also it's it's weird because the uh, another fact that they said in the video is uh anyways the the definition of loneliness. <laughs> I don't know why I thought yeah. that was funny. <laughs> Sandy be sadness because one has no friends. Or <laughs> the the one thing they did say in the video is that um <clears throat> like the opposite of being lonely doesn't necessarily mean you have a lot of friends. You just have really good. You might have very few but very fulfilling. very fulfilling re- relationships, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say that like maybe someone feels lonely without knowing that or maybe someone has the symptoms of lonely without knowing it because then it kind of just means like hey like you should get more friends or something like that right? right but but maybe they have one or two and they really like that but then they still have these other symptoms too right but then maybe those relationships aren't fulfilling enough that 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 could be it too no i i i see your point that it could uh affect you without you even knowing it it's like mm-hmm. a unknown disease i think that you can have like the bestest friends in the <coughs> world but that can only fulfill you so much i would uh, for disagree. lonely for I w- loneliness i would disagree oh uh, yeah i would disagree really? yeah, yeah. I, I would disagree really like it depends why what you're that? looking for right yeah the reason why i say that is because i feel like you can still feel lonely if you don't fill your own cup by yourself even if you have like the bestest friends in the world well, but does the, that relate to loneliness? That, that's about like self happiness. Yeah, right? it's not really lonely or not. Like, mm. like if I had really good friends, I'm willing to share anything and everything with, and my subjective experience with them was like as the as best as I can. As in, like I'm not wanting or yearning for any more from this relationship. Right. Then I am not lonely. I might just be unhappy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. You're unhappy okay, in other aspects. Okay. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it's yes. like in terms of loneliness and connection and stuff, you're fulfilled there. Yeah. But it's okay. like for your own, yeah. Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah I'm, I'm completely like, fulfilled right. with what I get from the relationship, and all my desires are good. I'm just unhappy somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Get it? Yeah. So that's um interesting part. When was the last time you guys felt lonely? Um, probably like my last breakup. Mm-hmm. That was like I think like ten years ago or more. Oh no. Because I think after that, I kind of learned to be content alone. Yeah. And then after that, every relationship there was just easy because I was already content alone, if that makes sense. So like, I wasn't ever worried about being alone. So then I I felt that every relationship after that, um, whether it's friendship or whatever type of relationship, I felt like I could excel easily in that because I had nothing to lose, if that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Well, if I had to really think, I'd probably say around COVID time when I had like no social interaction and mm. that's probably when I felt the loneliest. Like I was at home with, you know, yeah, uh, like my partner. Yeah, but I don't know something about something about like the ability to fulfill, like, social interaction. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just. Well, I I think it's different. Like, I think you're more outgoing too. You're a bit mm. more of an extrovert, right? Like for me, I oh, we're all like, kind of on the spectrum of that. But I, I would say I'm uh I'm like forty sixty or maybe thirty seventy on the introvert or oh. the extrovert introvert. Oh, right? like, like you're less ex- extroverted. Yeah, yeah. Like not I maybe only slightly less. Yeah, I see, I see. But then I don't know. I I felt pretty okay doing my own thing too. Mm. I thought COVID was so much fun actually. <laughs> oh yeah, so much fucking fun. Yeah. If I were to think about the time when I felt loneliest, it was when I traveled to Europe. Oh yeah. This one time, yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, I and just yeah. smacked in the face. What? I've never heard this before. It's because I went when I was traveling around Europe. I went with the person that I went with. We just kept having arguments and like there was so much shit going on. And the way that we planned it, I let them 
hold we bought like a travel bag a travel fanny pack pack oh, yeah. or no tranny, uh, blah, blah, a travel fanny bag and so I put my wallet and like everything in there while we were walking around so I wouldn't have to worry about anyone fucking pickpocketing me and shit yeah. and then this one time we had a huge argument and he just left me and then I, we only paid for one sim card because we were like okay we only yeah. we're going to be together the whole time anyway so yeah. there's only one point with one sim card I'll tell they're you and whatever and that's fine and then we had one argument and he fucking just left. And so my phone didn't have any like connection and I didn't yeah. pay for fucking anything. And my wallet was with him and everything. And I was like, I'm in Europe and I'm fucking lost. That's fucked. And That's I had like a yeah. rom-com. It was not a rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a rom-com. And the whole, the entire, whole entire experience was fucking terrible. And that's the loneliness I've ever felt in my life. Oh shit. Why do you think, why do you think you're lonely in that moment? Cause like my, all my resources were gone. And so I had nothing and we were in a city where like, because I had no internet, I couldn't translate anything either. And it was like mm. one of those languages where I forgot which city it was, but like, like you can't, you can't fucking duck. tell anything. I see. Yeah. And I didn't have my money with me. I had fucking nothing. My phone wasn't working. I didn't know anyone in the city and anything. I didn't know the language. And then I was all the way on the other side of the world. So it's not like yeah, I can like right. ask just, like my family for help or anything. It's not like I can reach back. And then at that point I was like, okay, I want to go home. I'm, I'm fucking flying home. Yeah. But then, like, you can't. I fucking couldn't because X Y Z wouldn't give me my wallet. Mm. Yeah, you're to, like, confusing. It was you confused. No, but no, it actually felt very lonely because yeah, I was like, yeah. everyone I know is on the upper, opposite side of the world, yeah. and I'm like here yeah. alone on this side of the world. Absolutely I can't do nothing. Shit. Yeah, like, everything's yeah. out of your control. Too. Yeah. No, you're you're confusing loneliness and poor. <laughs> <laughs> you're just poor. you're okay. just poor at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you were so poor. <laughs> that was why. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, there was also a cool fact. So, like, they in this video, he went out to ask people, like, you know, what would make you happy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he like baited you with this video. So, if you guys watch this video, I'm already gonna spoil it for you guys. But at first, he'll have all the clips of people talking about money. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then later, every single one of those persons actually started talking about relationships right after they talked about money. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the cool thing about this video, they talked about there used to be this study where they said that after a certain amount of money, you don't get any more happy. Yeah. There's this like random study this guy did, and it's like after like say like seventy five thousand dollars a year, you don't get any more happy beyond that. Like there's a plateau that you hit. Like yeah. I, I'm just making up a, a, a number. At I the think moment, it right? was. 60. Uh, I think it was sixty. But then this other guy did another study, and I think this was a bit like more conclusive. I think they worked together to like say like okay, this may be the actual result. Is that if you're happy and you make more money, you become happier. If you're unhappy and you make more money, you do become happier, but then you plateau a lot earlier. Mm. But if you're already happy, then money just makes you happier. Right. right. But sense. if you're unhappy, if you're naturally unhappy, regardless of money or not, then you get money, then you become happier, but then you plateau a lot easier and mm. a lot earlier. Right, because it, it only gets you so far, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like happy people will get happier with money, but if you're already oh. unhappy, if there's something already fucked up about you that causes you or... Un unhappiness it is kind of true that no amount of money will buy you that happiness, happiness right? but if you're already happy then money will buy you additional happiness, happiness fair. because it's almost yeah. like i'm already happy this money just makes me like be able to do, do more stuff yeah, like, yeah yeah have more time yeah exactly i can see that completely exactly. yeah i feel like if you have a very pessimistic and negative mindset then there's not really much that you can add to your life to make that better well it's not even mindset i just feel like for example if you're addicted to something and then you make more money or you're just going to take more of that something and then like mm. your happiness will just plateau because that psychological effect of that something whatever that addiction is can only give you so much mm. right? like that happiness from that addiction can only give you so much at some point that's right? fair Be because it's almost like temporary stimulus right like, yeah yeah like money can only buy you temporarily temporary stimulus whereas yeah. like for you to like continually sustain like this level of yeah you know feeling of happiness like it needs to be internal. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you hate everyone around you. Yeah. And you make more money. Yeah, you might be able to move away and get a new job. But then, like, why did you hate everyone around you? You right. might just hate everyone around you at your new place now. You just have more money. That's the only difference, right? right? Then right. you might still be unhappy, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's how that like happiness plateau kind of mm. comes with money, which is interesting. I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. So like, money does kind of buy happiness, but only if you're already happy. Yeah. Right. Training. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, oh, that's a that's a really cool part of that video too. Uh, another part of the video okay so this goes back to about the health benefits so 
uh, allegedly, rate of cognitive decline was 20% higher for lonely individual, and they're also more prone to dementia. Oh, do you, I, I wonder why. Like, I honestly think that it's because, like, you're not actually stimulating your brain. Yeah, you don't get the diversity of thoughts. Oh, yes. Mm, mm. Yes. So without the diversity of thoughts, I feel like your cognitive decline, or you will have cognitive decline, and then you're also not challenged enough with your thoughts. Yes. It's just like if you don't work out or, like, if you don't move, right? Yeah. If, you're just, if, you, st- if you sit for 10 years, yeah, yeah, right, your yeah. body's just going to be, like, slow. Oh, I don't actually need this, so it's just going to, like... I actually... I would say it's something a little different. It would be like you only ran, but you never weightlifted. So for example, you could be like a super smart scientific researcher that only researches this one topic, but you don't have the diversity of thoughts of other people's emotions and feelings and things that you don't stimulate that side of your cognitive mm. ability, which causes that decline. So it's almost like you're a one trick pony. You only do this right. one thing and everything else may decline because you only did that one thing. Whereas if you ran and lifted and stretched and did all these stuff, then potentially everything can grow. Right. right. I can see that. It's kind of like when people go through their day, day-to-day stuff and they don't challenge their brains to do like more complicated math. So if you see yeah. like fucking division now, you'd be like, what the fuck? I don't get it. Yeah. And then your brain literally can't compute it on the spot versus if you do that like every day, eventually yeah. it'll be fucking easy. Mm-hmm. Or if for memory things, like if you always, if you're working on a memory puzzle and you're like, oh, I don't know. And you just check the answer then your brain is never going to work that part of it that Problem tries solvers. to no tries to remember things for a longer period of time or tries to access in your like, short term memory oh storage. Yeah. like try to access different parts of your memory yeah yeah mm. yeah i i like the why to it i the, they didn't say for a fact but i i assume it's the whole diversity of thoughts and stuff like you just get different things which mm-hmm. makes sense too like uh like so right now i'm reading american prometheus so that's uh the biography Ooh. of robert Oppenheimer, mm-hmm. the guy who made the atomic bomb. And it's cool because a lot of intellectuals, they like to, or not a lot, but let's say a good majority of the very good intellectuals, they like to read poetry and philosophy and learn different languages at the same time as they're doing like the craziest physics in the world. Right. And I think that's the whole diversity that's of thought. I didn't yeah. say what poetry they're reading. For him yeah. specifically. Like he does French, Greek, German, like almost poetry all. Yeah, I think it's overrated. <laughs> I think people think it's cool. I mean, I think it's very nice. I, I mean, I, I do think it's cool, but it's overrated. I think it's very artistic. Like I, I used to, I used to be very not like against it, but I was like, oh, like this is kind of pointless, you know? Fucking drawing yeah. art, fucking writing poetry, like expressing things in like a different way. But I'm like, oh, actually, and I, I think it's because I grew up very like objective, very black and white, like. Yeah. Uh, very direct that kind of stuff yeah. so with art it it was like oh you want to draw like you know a line or something then you just draw a line it's like oh yeah it's a, it's a line looks pretty you know close to realistic but then i feel like art is just now i understand that art is more than just making something look good it could be like you know how that that saying like a uh, picture speaks a million words or whatever it's mm-hmm. like, oh, you kind of interpret your own, whatever the fuck you want to interpret and there's no actual meaning to it, but it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> if you take it less seriously, as in like... It conveys a feeling. Yeah. It makes you yeah. feel something. And it's different for everyone. Right, exactly. Which is something I think people should have to understand. Like, I think poetry contests sometimes are kind of dumb because I think it's different for everyone. <laughs> it's like poetry contest. I yeah, want to join some. Like slam poetry and all that bullshit that's too, stupid. right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think of when I think of poetry. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's cool, but it's, it's, li- it's limited. It's, it's almost, you have to understand the language at a higher level to truly understand the poetry at that level too. Mm. Yeah. Right. I think it's like painting, but with words. It's like if you're yeah. implying something, but, people don't have an understanding it's like oh we'll just uh, take yeah. it exactly as uh yeah I, I think a part of it is straight vocabulary like you just yeah. don't know the 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 vocabulary but then also understanding the language at a different level also means learning some of the art of the language and the art of the language would be like specifically masterpiece right like hamlet or things like that that they're referencing with the words they're using mm-hmm. right that's when it gets intense so mm-hmm. So the reason why I think rap is so crazy is because you have to understand the culture oh, of the shit. street to understand the words that they are using. 
right? Because if you look at the words they're using at a base level, it doesn't mean too much. But the reason why it's such a high level is because they're using this cultural environment to create that like those combination of words so insane right yeah so then it really depends like that's why it's so subjective because you could be in the realm of um like shakespeare and stuff like that and then those type of poetry means a lot to you but then rap means nothing to you right well that's actually really cool because i was thinking about how i used to really like writing poetry and then i just kind of feel like i made that connection that maybe that's why i also really like dissecting rap too and listening to the lyrics to like rap too because it's kind of the same yeah but you add music to it but I, I think it's a connection. So, for example, if one of us rapped about, you know, Edmonton growing up Asian and oh, things like that, <laughs> and, and, and we use terminology, yeah, we use like Asian American terminology, right, and things like that, then our peers that are similar to us with our um, upbringing would, oh, would really relate to that, right? Yeah. right? Uh, and then yeah. the words, the specific words you use may have now double meaning, even though to Fair. other people, they only have a singular meaning, right? Right. So then it gets even more intense the more engulfed you are in that culture, right? But then it becomes, cool. it comes super, cool. super subjective, right? So like if you're from New York and you do a rap about New York, you have maybe some New York slang that other people don't know, right? Yes. So to us, that's like, oh, those are cool lyrics. But to them, it's like, oh, there's like five different meanings to exactly what he just said, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's yeah, cool. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm not into poetry or anything, but it's cool. It's cool. Uh, yeah, and then the next part is, this is a weird one. So they're looking at, okay, at 80 year old, are you happy or not? Right. So usually they can see that at 50, some type of metric will result in if you're happy or not when you're 80. So for example, if you smoke a pack a day and you're 50 at 80, fuck. you would probably be <laughs> dead. Right. Like there's, that's the metric they kind of went through. Right. Uh, and for some reason it wasn't heart rate. It wasn't obesity. It wasn't any of this, but happiness at 80 was just dependent on relationships at 50. So, like, if they went to ask people at their 80, if they went back in time to see their history, if they had fulfilling relationships or they were working on fulfilling relationships or something like that at the age of 50, that was a good indicator that when they're 80, they're going to be happy. Oh, no. Do you think, like, the reason for that is because of loneliness? Because if you don't have fulfilling relationships, then you'd probably be lonely? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Cool. Yeah, that's exactly the. That was the thesis. That was the thesis of uh, the start of Jorge thing. Uh, it's clicked, guys. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> and now we're at the end of the podcast. <laughs> uh, another cool part. I mean, not cool, but a bit obvious is like allegedly. Young people are feeling more lonely now than before because physical interaction, the social connection you get from that is so much more than online connection. Oh, shit. Mm. So like me chatting with my friends online is different than me sitting and like talking to you guys. Can I, I find can we too. See? Sometimes it's exhausting. To chat in person? In online. Oh, like maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like being able to vocalize and like talk and stuff is like, I feel like it's much easier than just like, or I, but I guess online could also mean like, video and voice but i think this was regardless of the media they say that the physical interaction which is what younger people nowadays have less of uh the physical connection creates more of a social connection than the online connection Mm -hmm. and then that's why they're saying loneliness in younger people nowadays are higher than it was back then is Mm -hmm. the random stat they kind of put in Mm -hmm. but people are dying off faster maybe I, i don't know if it's true or not again this is all like alleged stuff but i maybe i see it like I see how if I only had online interaction, I'd be pretty, pretty bummed out about yeah, that too. For sure. I wonder what the, okay. So can you search up average lifespan of blah, 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 like humans, and then search what up like average want? lifespan <laughs> of people that live in Japan. Cause I, I think Japan's longer, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Japan's really? Long, but yeah. Japan, I thought yeah. Japan was like the loneliest city. Or uh, like it's because of their diet. They live longer. I feel yeah, on I average on oh, Earth, there's yeah, maybe. they have more centennials on a single on this one island than I also above a hundred. Yeah. Oh, I don't actually think they are lonelier. I think they're more alone. Oh, I think they've they've breeded a culture that forces you to learn to be content when you're alone. I so then, agree, but I also would like to say that I feel like they are also lonelier. Oh, maybe okay. I don't know. I just feel like more of them are more okay being alone. Like, you know how the Ichiran, you have your own little booth to eat and stuff. I feel like they're more okay with that. 
But yeah, you could be right. They could be potentially more lonely too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but no, no, they do have one of the higher ones. I think at least top ten. I don't know if it's. Oh wow! I don't think think, they are top. I don't think they're top anymore. Let me see. I I think we searched this recently. Top lifespan by country. Uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong, Macau, and then Japan. Yeah, that's what I remember. I think one of the Hong Kong crazy stat that I read is because how much they walk. Oh, apparently yeah. walking is good for your health in general, yeah. and they walk in a, a crazy amount. Like oh, they yeah. have the most That's steps right. per day of all countries, bar none. Oh, like yeah, they have the very high. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's why I knew Japan wasn't first because I, oh. I think I knew I knew they were somewhere in the top like five at least, but I knew they weren't top one anymore. Switzerland's like the best at everything, huh? Uh they're just rich, I think. But yeah, <laughs> it's the whole like you know, if you're happy already, it makes you better. Which one lands fourth, by oh, the shit, way? Japan yeah. is third. Yeah, yeah, I mean, third of you know uh, many is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Singapore. Yeah, Singapore's Singapore is pretty high up there. Uh, well. Singapore walks. I a feel lot. like it. It also depends on like the type of uh, like government. Like Switzerland is socialist, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So I feel like for that, obviously, age span expectancy is longer because what about Hong Kong then. <laughs> 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 Tell me your argument there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the lowest is Chad and Nigeria. Chad's oh, that's crazy. 50 54. Could you imagine 54 is your life experience? That means you're already half past your life. Like you're past the half point of your life. So at what point would you fucking retire, dude? Like you I, don't. <laughs> yeah. You work for the government right. until <laughs> until you die, and then holy shit, that's yeah. actually fucking crazy. Can you imagine? Yeah, I wonder if there's one that's more skewed for girls. Oh, Nigeria is worse for girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chad's second. Yeah, 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 Chad's not first anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Chad for guys, Nigeria for girls. All right, that makes sense. I would like but to point out two, there's a very there common only 200 thing. countries in the world? No, I think there's more. So then there's... I think some of them, there's not enough statistics to, uh, to give a good like enough... Like the numbers would be yeah, skewed, yeah. right? There's 109... Oh, maybe what there the are... Hell? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I think there's more. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes they... Like, like you know like, the, the the British Isles. I think they count that as their own, but uh, they're technically oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, like some of those situations. Right. There's a commonality between all these things. You they're know. all in Africa. <laughs> yeah, very common thing. I think the lack of clean water really skews yeah, it a lot. That's yeah, true too. Yeah, and then I think being um like not able to third world. Yeah, like uh cl- chlorine or whatever that kills. Pretty much, if you have a kid Cola. that dies at zero age old, it it'll, it'll skew, skew the stats yeah. like crazy, right? right? Yeah. It'll just destroy it. So, like, I think infant mortality is probably what right. skews yeah, a yeah, lot right. of this stuff, right? right? right. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they count that or not. <laughs> I don't know how Is this in works. France? Uh, no, I think this is in Africa, probably. It was probably like a previous French colony. I don't even know how to say it. Quite the Yeah, That's this is Africa. South Africa. Right or oh, no, this is Africa. It's straight up Africa. This is uh, West Africa. It literally says that. Yeah. But yeah. And then the last part of the video is just a quick thing. They just said that um, make staying connected a practice that we can cultivate. So it's like working out and staying connected should be similar only because it can, for me at least, yeah, it can contribute to my lifespan Mm -hmm. and stuff. So I should actively think about, all right, connecting with people and, you know, talking to people and trying to yeah and there's a difference between just talking and actually being connected connected yeah i think one big thing about loneliness again back to the definition is it's a subjective experience of being less connected than you want to be with people like connected and understood i feel like right yeah but it's it's the whole point of being less connected than you want to be with people so like you have to know what you want and how much you want to connect and you want to try to reach that level right right because like you could be over connected and that could be yeah, but I think the the biggest factor would be, for example, if I have something that I'm so ashamed of that I won't tell anyone, that but I want to tell people, but I'm so ashamed of it, then that could be something that's hindering me possibly of being more connected and make me feel lonely now because right. there's something I'm ashamed of, right? Like right. I've, you know, I don't know, right. some crazy disease or something like that, right? That I want to share. But then the mm. fact that I can't share it because of my shame is actually making me lonely. Mm. Oh, damn. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so that was a 
I don't know. That was a cool video. If you guys want to also look at the video, it was just cool stats. Like we already watched it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. If you go through the video, it's pretty much it. But I thought I was like, "Whoa, shit!" There's like a lot of cool info they have on the video. What? what uh, how did this pop up, or how did you get inspired to watch this? Oh, uh, so I have a thing for myself at work where I try to learn one new thing every day. Uh, yeah, you did tell me this. Uh, so whether that be AI news, whether that be you know. A, a tip from a software like oh excel use this function instead of this function this is what it does right Learn or, something new every day yeah so so usually i miss like one or two days so then on the third day i'll do three three in a row right uh and then i'll just stack some stuff just because i'm busy or i just didn't want to do something at that time uh so one of this video was there and i was like you know what? this this will be a cool one to learn because i didn't just focus on like technical things i do at work even yeah. though it is at work i think being uh Okay, I think your workers being happy or fulfilled is also part part of their productivity. Yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. So then I thought, okay, then like this happiness thing is completely relevant to work, even though someone may not see it at the at the at on site, right? Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I just saw the video and I've been watching some of his videos, which are pretty cool. Like he talks, he's a what's his name again? Vera. How do you, oh yes, Vera Vera Satum Vera. Did I? veritasium veritasium is his uh, youtube channel so he's like a phd and he has a doctorate that's 420 for a second there. <laughs> yeah he, he has a he has a doctorate in uh in physics wow and this is like his video uh, he he does a lot of cool videos that i relate a lot to because mm. he whenever he talks about some it's physics stuff he goes into the mathematics of it a bit and I, i'm really in tune and i really understand that stuff so i really like to watch that uh but yeah and then one of his i think is like a year ago or something or maybe a couple months ago he had a video about happiness and i was, I was like oh, already oh. subscribed what the hell whoa yeah. oh here it was just four months ago what oh the, i rec oh, i know this what guy. the ultimate study on happiness reveals and i was like oh that's cool that's what you watch right yeah, yeah that's the exact video i watched what the ultimate study on happiness reveals four million views damn yeah and i was like oh shit i want to learn something and then as soon as he said that you know it relates to longevity and life span. I was like, oh shit, I'm I gotta sold. take notes. I gotta start taking notes right uh, now. So so normally when I do this, learn one thing a day, I do take notes just so I have a receipt. So if anyone asks, I'm like, hey, you know, I actively try to learn. Uh, uh, just in case someone at my company is like, what do you do, you know, with learning and shit? I was like, hey, here's my receipt really of all nice. my notes of me actively learning. Uh, but yeah, all, this, I Sick. took notes at work and then I also put some on my phone because I was like, oh, this would be a cool topic to talk about because like it's kind of relatable. Because I think at least on this podcast, I've talked a lot about health and physical health stuff you do to make you last longer. Yeah. Or to make you live longer. Yeah. But I've never gone into any of this stuff where it's like happiness. The other aspects of making you live longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think I've also, I wouldn't say I've neglected it, but I haven't focused on it enough. Mm -hmm. oh, very interested to see if you keep focusing on your happiness while other things you'll discover. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I'm pretty happy and I'm not lonely <laughs> at all. <laughs> so. I but but I do I will actively try to cultivate it more. I think this podcast is already indirectly cultivating it quite a bit naturally. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, the connection me and Viv has, I feel like, is naturally cultivated through seeing each other. You know, two three hours a week just talking about stuff, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I have also thought about okay, how do I cultivate it with other people within the group that I want to stay close with? Mm -hmm. One thing I did note to myself is like I don't care about quantity ever yes yeah right mm -hmm. so then i'm not gonna go look for someone new i want to build on the old stuff that i already have mm -hmm. i think that's very important yeah okay. so Quality i think from quantity from this video that's probably the biggest takeaway for me is that i'm actually gonna start thinking about it whereas before i never thought like, about be it proactive about it yeah because like before i never thought about it because it just felt natural that it was always happening and i never mm -hmm. felt like i've never felt wanting to connect even further mm-hmm but now I can cultivate a bit more and see where it takes me when I think about it a bit more, right? Because what I want may also change. And yeah. I, I think the more you cultivate it is almost like upping your max rep or max weight. Like you don't have to lift at that weight, but now you have more options of what weight you want to lift at. Mm -hmm. It's just like a yeah. simple example. So if I cultivate my relationships to a really, really high level of connectedness, I don't have to connect with them at that level all, all the, time, the time, but I have more options of what level I want to connect with at what time. Yeah. Right. And like yeah. almost like the benchmark and the threshold of all your connections too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's that's like, true. Like right? I have a comparison now exactly. of what I want. You also yeah. have better quality. Yes. Well, that's exactly yeah. what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like once you get to a certain point, it's like, oh, like we know 
like we can cultivate relationships or connections at this point. And it's yeah. like, okay, now I want the basis of my like connections to be here instead of like right here. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, I thought, I thought it's a cool aspect that I never thought of that never affected me. <laughs> and it's something that is almost like a fun little project. Like, you know how last year I made the resolution of like making a new friend every whatever? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that I remember, was so dumb. <laughs> I remember hearing all your little stories about it. I was like, hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But then now I feel like I have a new goal of just, you know, this whole cultivating. Deepening and, your connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, I'm very curious to hear your experience Progress. with this because I feel like you don't, I feel like experiencing loneliness, sadness, lack of relationships or lack of a qual- quality relationships in your life can be a catalyst for you to want to learn this. Right. But if you're in a happy state already, yeah, I feel like you can learn so much more without having that depression yeah. at first in terms of your growth. Well, you also, I, I, so for me, I also started to realize things I'm already doing that are good that I should keep doing or think more about. Mm. So I'll give one example. And I never really thought about it until we talked about it a bit and after I watched that video. Uh, Joyce and I are learning Spanish together, right? Oh, sure. Just, just, just for funsies, right? But then now I thought about it. I was like, this actually brings us to another level. Like, I've never done this with anyone, and it, it you can like, role play that your study buddies, yeah, yeah in Spanish. <laughs> but it, it's See, como estás? <laughs> it's cool because it's like a challenge you do together, muy caliente, and you're also like <laughs> helping and teaching each other at the same time, mm. right? And then it's the whole going back to the diversity of thought. Like you get to think differently with someone now Mm. and you're forced to think differently because I'm motivated to learn because she wants to learn. And then she's also motivated because I also want to learn. Right. Like we both want to get better at it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine it also make your relationship strong because you're working on a problem together. Yeah. Yeah. Project together. So what I just explained all of this about like learning Spanish, that's probably something that relates to cultivating a relationship and like going against loneliness but without me even knowing that until I watched this video and until I had this discussion that that's actually something I'm, I'm already doing in the background without knowing that I would, I'm doing it. Fair. Right. Uh, and I, I feel like it could probably come up in some other examples too that I have no idea. Right. So for example, another one uh, with Butch. Recently, I gave him a book that I read. Yeah. I think that's kind of cultivating a cool relationship because now we, talk, we, about we talk about the book a bit yes. and then we talk about the scenes in the book and we like hype over the same thing. Like conne- connection and whatever is all over like shared experience and shared struggle. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So then this is now something that prior to watching this video and this conversation we're having, I never thought could cultivate a relationship. But now that I think about it, I was like, Oh, this is actually progressing our relationship into something else. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So do you guys want to talk about anything else? We're about an hour and a bit in. An hour 45. Ended off here. Mm. Sure. Uh, anything else you want to add? Any astrology stuff? Man, fucking Mercury retrograde has really been dampening my Leo. <laughs> <laughs> my Leo rising. <laughs> uh, how about you? How's your retrogrades? Yeah, it's uh, failing. My retrogrades are failing. Let me search up what the fuck a retrograde is. Retrograde is directed or moving backward. I feel like we should know a degenerate I, person. I am using this for a few people now. You're a retrograde. retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one cool thing about uh, one thing I want to kind of mention is one cool thing about reading American Prometheus is it's such a weird writing style. Like this is nonfiction, so compared mm. to all the fiction I've been reading, so I've had to like tap every page. I've had to like tap three or four words just to understand what it is. But it's, it's kind of cool, like learning all these. Like random new words, but it's just because they use a completely different writing style. Yeah, which is kind of cool though. That's pretty cool. Which are different in what in what sense? Like, like they just use diction and yeah, yeah, the, way yeah, they phrase yeah. the, the words they use is just stuff I don't normally see in oh. my daily life, but also in all the other fictional books I read. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. Because in nonfiction, they just ex- ever, express things differently. You ever read these books and you're like, oh, I kind of want to talk like this now? Uh, y- yes and try, no. Try, but I, it doesn't come naturally. You look kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's yeah. what I also thought too. I feel like if you don't completely grasp the it's word like, properly. It's like archaic yeah. English almost, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You just sound like a dumbass if you don't <laughs> completely understand the word. Right? You're just like throwing random terminology. You're like, 
throwing like here's a big word for you yeah exactly <laughs> you just like remember a random fucking theorem and one word in it and you just throw that word to <laughs> sound big but it's it's kind of dumb. dumb yeah mm. yeah but when you truly understand the word it is cool yes mm, very interesting that's kind of like what we were talking about with david right when people were well, how he, how he wanted to simplify his language yeah and how some people randomly try to make their diction more complicated for no reason yeah yeah but like it goes back to the whole relationship thing for that too. I feel like if you just have that much vocabulary, you can choose at what level yes. of vocabulary you want to express yourself at. Yes. Yeah. Whereas if you're down here, you can never express yourself up there. <laughs> Fair. Right? Like there's no, there's no way that that'll happen, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye bye.